Hey folks, this is Echo. If you are new to Seven Days to Die, or just have no interest in aesthetics, this might be a perfectly serviceable and maybe even overkill base. This follows the standard Seven Days to Die base meta, which is basically a box on stilts, having a staircase up to an elevated platform that comes to your fighting position. Inside, you have plenty of room for crafting and storage, and it's a simple build using only cube shapes. But if you yearn for something a little more, I'll teach you how to build something incredible in this same amount of space. This is the upgraded version of the Echo Box that's meant to handle hordes up to about day 49. In terms of building materials, the requirements are pretty light, but the base still serves both crafting and horde functions. I went extremely minimal on the electronics for this one because I wanted this one to be viable as a day seven horde base before upgrades. And this is what the Echo Box would look like around day seven. If you're interested in learning how to build this, stick around. I'm gonna show you all the resources needed to build this in each block step by step. If you're wondering if this is viable by day seven, it absolutely is. If you wanna go check out my series, The Abyss, I built this in that series by about day five or six just with materials I got from questing and a small amount of mining. So now that you've taken a look at the Echo Box, let's jump on into the build so you can make it yourself. All right, to get started with this build, let's talk about materials first. And to build this, you're gonna need right around 500 wooden cubes, which is gonna take about 6,000 wood. Go ahead and get up to 6,000 so you have the extra for repairs and whatnot. And then in terms of cobblestone for upgrades, we're gonna need about 1,500, so 1,500 small stones, 1,500 clay soil. In terms of size, you're going to want to have 23 in length here and then eight in the width or whichever way you want to call those. So as you're looking at this, the areas in red are where we're going to place blocks. So these are going to be the pillars here and then the stair supports will go here and the stairs will go here. But we're going to start building the six pillars that we have under here first. And we're going to start in the back corner here and we're going to be using these, which are wedge 60 corner tip cube one quarters. And atop those, we're going to be putting cube one quarters. So you'll pick one corner to start in place, rotate 90 degrees, place, rotate 90 degrees, place and rotate 90 degrees, place. And then we will repeat this for the five other pillars. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab these quarter blocks and we're going to rotate these until it fits on one of the sides. So you can see we've got all of our six initial spots. So one, two, three, and four up is what we're gonna go. And we'll do all of these while it's rotated in the same direction. So as you might guess, this is a rinse and repeat where we advance rotate it till we get to the next corner angle and we'll continue until we fill all four sides of this in. One little tip to help out is that you want to end on the center pillar because that will have you up at this level to start the next part. We're going to be pulling back out our wedge 60 corner tip cube one quarters, but this time we're going to rotate them upside down. And this is going to help create those hourglass figures on the pillars. And you want to start in the far back corner. That way you make sure that you don't misplace it as you cover it up by the other pieces. So we'll take care of that for the five pillars that we have right here. And then we'll be standing atop the center one. Once we're done filling these in, we're going to end up putting the sides onto the base and we're going to use cube one half ramp tips. And we're not going to start in the corner. We're going to start one over from the corner. So we'll put one in each and then we'll put them across as such. And we're going to repeat this on the opposite side. Again, these are the sides, not the front and the back. So we'll fill these in. Then for the front and the back, you're going to do very similar, except for you're going to leave that corner still open and you're just gonna do two blocks on each side. So one, two, and go to the other side and go one, two. Same thing for the front of the base. We're gonna turn around and rotate the block so that it's the, the wedge faces down and outward. One, two, and one, two. Now we're ready to pull out a playing cube and start filling in the floor of the base. I'll flip to the overhead view because we'll fill in everything except for four blocks. And then where this spot is here, we're gonna do a couple things. First, we're gonna take this block, which is a wedge 60 offset. We're gonna rotate this until the thin side faces up and out towards where we're gonna build the stairs. Like that. We're gonna place that here and here. Next, we're gonna pull out a wedge narrow low and we're gonna angle it so that we have sight lines towards where the pit will be in the advanced version, but just in general, being able to shoot to the foundation of 
where they go up the stairs and the ladders. And then we're gonna take an iron door. You could honestly use a wood door here if you want to save on resources. And then we're gonna advance rotate it until we have it sitting flush. And you wanna make sure that the door handle is facing towards the front of the base. And that's important because you want the door to flip down towards the back of the base so that you still have a sight line. Now we'll still need to add the protection bar in, but we'll do that last so that we don't fall through during Horde Night. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and add in our ladders in the back. You can honestly put in whatever type you want. I'm just going with scaffolding ladders throughout the whole build to keep kind of the same aesthetic of it. But this will help you get in and out of the base, both during the build and then obviously afterwards. All right, now we got a way in and out of the base. We'll start working on the fighting position in the front. So we're gonna use that wedge 60 offset piece and we're gonna put the thin side of it facing outward because we're gonna connect poles to it afterwards. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna outline the base and put up the walls. In the corners, we're gonna be using wedge 60 tip corner base and wedge 60 tip corner top. So we're gonna kind of create an hourglass figure with this. So we're gonna start in this corner over here because that's the way it's currently facing. And we're just gonna slot this into that corner, then we're gonna rotate it, and we'll keep going to the right. Next, we're gonna grab this tip top and we'll start back over here where we started before, and we'll place, we'll rotate it to the right once. Place, place, and rotate. All right, now we're gonna do the inversion you know, inverted version of that. And I'm gonna actually start over here so it's more visible on camera. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna jump on top of this, and we're gonna jump up and place. So we'll complete that in all four corners for the tips, and then atop of those, we'll do the wedge 60 corner bases. All right, now we've got the four sides outlined. Now from here, we're gonna add half blocks. This is just a simple half block. So we'll come here and we'll do this side first. So we're gonna go one, two, one, two, and then we're gonna come across here and go one, two. We're gonna skip over the top section of here. We'll deal with that in a section, in a second. And then along the sides, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to go up to, then we're going to leave a space. And that's where our window is going to go. And then we're going to repeat that on the other side. Just reverse this around. And then we're going to go across the back. And again, we'll just rotate this till we've got the right position. We're going to leave the bottom section of this open because that's where the door coming in from the back is going to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a ladder onto the back and then start working on the roof. We're gonna use a scaffolding ladder. And again, it's two spaces up from the bottom. So around the top to give that tapered in look up at the top, we're gonna to be using these wedge narrow lows. And we're just gonna go around the whole top of the base with the exception of the corners. We're gonna leave those out again because we're gonna make those spires that go up in the corners. So I made one mistake on the two blocks above the windows. Those should be removed because we're gonna replace those with cube one half ramp tips facing outward. And this is gonna give that appearance of kind of having a window overhang. These are the small little additions that you can add to your base that add a whole lot of character. Because as you notice, going back to the, the original base that we showed, this is still in the same exact footprint. We're just using different block shapes to make it have more character. So next we're gonna be framing in the rest of the corners. And for this, we're gonna use wedge narrow high corner, wedge narrow middle corner, and wedge narrow low corner. And this is the same as all the blocks that we've been rotating 90 degrees and placing. These are easy to understand because you'll know that they're flush up against the side because you'll see them sit up against those wedge narrow low blocks that we have along the edges. Next, we'll add in the middle corner and we'll rotate around and then we'll add the low corner and rotate around. And now we are ready for the roof. So we'll just come in here. We've got these pole plates. We're gonna flip it up here. And the reason we do this is to give the illusion of having a taller ceiling in here. We'll put that last bit of ladder up there. 
and then we'll finish up the rooftop up here. So in this spot, we're going to go ahead and grab a trap door and rotate it back to us. The arrow indicates the side that's going to open. So I place it here. That's the side that opens up. The hinge is on the opposite side of where the arrow is facing. Last thing that we have to do up here, and we don't have to, but you know, this is all about looks, is we're going to put this industrial fence 02 across the top. And that is just gonna finish up the overall look of the base. All right, that is the rooftop done. The only thing that we have left in this area is adding on the doors. We'll wait to add the door here, but we will slap on the door on the back side. We've got two double doors just for this purpose. So this one will rotate to go in the space there like that. And that's our exit out the back. And then in terms of the layout, you can do whatever you want in here. I'll just show you the typical layout that I go go with. Um, and if you want to see how this lays out in my in my playthrough, you can go check out the abyss um, where I actually build the space. So now that we've got the mainstay of the base put together, we're going to go put in the stairs and the walkway across so that we can let all of our zombie friends come on in. To start off, we're gonna put on the top half of the hourglass of this pillar. And to do this, we're gonna nerd pull up. It's always good to keep some of these frame shapes just for getting up to higher places when you're building for temporary scaffolding. And we're gonna come in here with our same block that we used on the other ones, flip it upside down and add all four in. Next, we're gonna jump up onto that newly created pillar and we're gonna put two regular cubes on the side opposite of the base. And then we're gonna add in these cube beveled corners on the front facing towards the base. And that just, gives that tapered in look where we're gonna connect up our tightrope. Now we are ready to put the stairs in and we'll start on the right side using a ramp incline one half right and a ramp incline filler one half right. So we'll start on the outside of our highlighted areas and we're gonna start off with the incline block. And then once we place that, we'll go on the back side of it and place the filler block. And then we'll go back to the front and we'll place the ramp block, rinse and repeat until eventually you hit the stair supports, which I forgot to put in. So we'll come back in and add those now. So for these, we're going to just be using quarter cube blocks and you'll rotate them till they match the alignment here. And you're going to go up five with these. So one, two, three, four and five. Then simply repeat on the other side. Now you can carry that outer rail of the stairs all the way up to the top. Once we're done with that, we'll start on the left side using the left incline and the left filler. Once that's done, we're ready to put the stairs in here and we're gonna be using the new stairs O2 and we'll just take these all the way up to the top. Once those are in place, you can go ahead and start adding in the ladders down the side. We're gonna go with scaffolding ladders, but again, you can use whatever type you want. After you finish one side, simply move to the other side and replicate the same thing there. And this gives zombies shorter pathways to get back. After you're done there, we're gonna nerd pull up and then we're gonna be connecting the stairs and the base via 0.0125M side centered pillars. These ones are a little bit tricky to connect and you gotta to point to the very tip of each of the end. Sometimes these can be made easier if you place a block above them so that you can target the block above and it will force it down. You can see here, you gotta be right on the mark there. But once we've got that other set, we can actually point across to the other side and have it connect there. Now that that's in place, all we gotta do is build the fighting position. So we're gonna start off putting two cubes in the top here. And then we're gonna use the wedge 60 offsets with the small side angled down. And this is gonna essentially help stop the zombies from stacking up. So they'll push off to the side if they try. Next, we're gonna actually put in the baluster rails. So this is one of my favorite new blocks from Alpha 21. You can shoot through it, you can repair through it, you can do all the good stuff through it. Once that's in place, we're gonna line some poles along the edge. It's just a plain old pole. We'll put them there, rotate them the other way and put them on the other side. And then the last thing to fill in here, we're gonna use double poles and those are gonna go on the inside. And these allow you a really good line of sight and then we're gonna double up with two on the outside. Now it's a time for some liberal application of cobblestone. You're gonna to wanna to get the primary fighting position, the tight ropes across, the platform at the top. You can do the stair, some of the stairs if you want, but more importantly, we wanna hit everything up to level three, especially around the wedges. 
because the zombies will use those to kind of jump up and hit that third block. Typically you'd only go up to two, but in this case I like going up to three. So with upgrades complete there, all we got to do is hop in the base, throw the last door on, and then we're ready to hop into Horde Night with the uh, Day 49 Horde to see how it goes. Let's jump into it, folks. Enter the Echo Box. Come on in, friends. Man, we got a whole swath of demos right out of the rip. So that is my biggest concern with this base. Oh, there goes our first demo. We'll just have to watch that. Let's drop some grenades down to the pit here. Oh, just saw that demo pop up down there. Was afraid of blowing him up with the grenades. Man, look at the numbers that are just cycling through here. But the good thing is, is they aren't getting hung up anywhere. They're effectively going up the ladders and I'm ineffectively trying to throw a Molotov. Like I mentioned earlier in the tutorial, <laughs> like I mentioned in the tutorial, it's really hard to get the right angle throwing through there. And apparently I am inept. I got, I think one of three of those actually to go through. So there's several concerns with this base, but none of them are the pillars below. If you notice those five pillars are being completely ignored. So unless they break through, this front barrier in front of us, so we are safe for Horde Knight. The question is going to be how much of the, you know, the stairs and the ladders up will we have to repair at the end of the night. But that is a load of rads, demos. So let's try this little trick here. We'll close the door, let it go boom. And that'll take care of some of the folks on the other side. Here's kind of another angle. You can kind of see them falling into the pit and then cycling back up. Take advantage of this for a second. Huck a grenade down there. So that gives for good cleanup. And if you put some points into explosives, you could really wreck them on that. Sniper rifles are not the most effective, at least not in the configuration that I'm using here because I don't have a long single path to line them up on. SMGs and machine guns and whatnot would probably do much better on this base. But, you know, I was just trying something different. So far, we seem to be holding out pretty well. The most damage I've taken thus far has been from cops. So we'll cross our fingers for it. 1.25 in the morning. We still do have a lot of Zeds out here. So we're going to huck some more grenades down, see if we can thin out the herd. There we go. Do another one at the doorway here. Looks like we got a couple of them. And man, there's a massive pile at the uh, bottom of the ladders there. Now the nice bonus here is even if we lose the ladders, there's still the ramp going up. It'll just be a longer pathway, so they might get frustrated and start murdering blocks rather than <laughs> trying to get up. Man, that spear animation is wretched in third-person perspective. Looking back at this, it, it does not look like I'm stabbing at... Oh, ow! Yeah, speaking of cop spit, down to 14 health. That was... Uh, I was almost lost a life right there. All right, let's put another grenade. Oh, he's spitting again. Let's get some repairs in real quick. Whoa. So I can't say this space has been 100% safe, but it has been a fun adventure here fighting this. And not bad for as small a profile of a base as this is. And we have no traps really helping. We've got the SMG turret on the roof. It's really only dealing with vultures, but we don't have any electric fences um, or dark traps or anything else to kind of thin them out or slow them down. Just need to make it a little bit more here, and I think we'll be in the clear. Oh, 
but man they have torn the hell out of the front of this so it's definitely going to be some repairs after this. oh there's another cop we have crossed over the 4 a.m threshold so i'm going to hang back here and heal for a second and then we'll just whittle these folks down and go check out what the damage to the base looks like so that uh you know we can kind of report back and you get an idea of how this functions on a day 49. again this was survivalist um 64 zombies so you know it's not quite easy mode not insane didn't feel like we needed to take it to the full test because i never designed this base intending to you know do a max game stage horde with it all right we got what a couple more left come on folks i just want to show people around the base here looks like darlene's all that's left let's uh just give her a quick lead blessing and we'll check out the base to see how it stood so we lost a block there all this looks you know still together it's clearly damaged there'd be some repairs after the fact but overall everything stood up the primary pillars are all in good shape i'd say this base is great for taking you up to day 49 if you do end up building it in your world please let me know uh drop a note down in the comments on the things you changed i want to show one last thing before i bow out and that's the insanity of how stable this base actually is so after everything was said and done i kind of wanted to say take a look and see like how many of these pillars could you lose and have the base still standing and you can see I, i'm going to take down that is all but the very back pillar still holding things up and i assume it's gaining some stability from the tightrope going across but there's another block taken there's one more still standing just on two blocks on that back corner one block still standing take that one out and there we go i don't know i feel like that uh that that was some shenanigans in how that was working but good times we'll watch it fall and see you on the next one folks hey folks i hope you enjoyed that and learned something if you want to see the playthrough series where i built this in real time you can go check out the abyss down below but as always, huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters over here. Take care, folks. I'll see you on the next one.